Packeek! Hello friends, Jeff here from Packeek. I'm here with a, a friend of mine and a first time guest yeah. on the show. So Keith cool. Malinak, how are you doing? I'm great, thanks for having me, this is fun, I can't Dude, wait. Of course, so um, you guys might know Keith as the producer for uh, Pat Gray's Unleashed on the Blaze Network, and he's also the host of an awesome podcast uh, called At The Mic. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, man, of course. It, it would um, it would be even more awesome if you would join me as a guest on that show sometime. Oh. I, I can definitely, <laughs> definitely make that happen. I can... Oh. I have a good feeling about this. <laughs> so, how long you been? Have you been at the uh, at the Blaze? Oh my goodness! Uh, what was the year? Twenty twenty. Uh, Eleven years now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was with Glenn back in New York City. No kidding. And then moved here with him in twenty twelve. Oh, so wow. been in Dallas for about eight years, but uh, eleven years with the Blaze, yeah. So uh, was moving, I guess it, it wouldn't be a culture shock. I was going to ask you if it's a culture shock to move from New York to Dallas, but you're, you're a Southern guy anyway. So. Yeah, the culture shock was, I grew up in Atlanta. Uh, we moved from Charleston, South Carolina to New York City. Oh, wow. That, that could be a bit of a that, shock. That was the culture shock, yeah. So, um, uh, but we love Dallas. In fact, uh, after Charleston, South Carolina, the Dallas Metroplex is probably the favorite place that Carrie and I have lived. And we've lived in a lot of places, so we really like it here. Well, because your wife is also in media as well. Well, I mean, she was a theater major. She's <laughs> actually, because uh, she went on to, um, to get her um, Master's of Divinity. And she's okay. now a pastor, really. So she's taken her theater degree and um, combined that with her um, uh, divinity. Uh, her, I got to yeah. see her officiate a wedding. Yeah. And she does, <laughs> she does an amazing job. She is by far the most entertaining. See? Uh, is, is she a pastor? Or yeah, what? she's a pastor. Okay, okay. Yep. Most entertaining pastor I've ever seen. I mean that in the best possible way. Uh, she's just, she's got that bubbly energy that yeah. you would see from a theater major. She's fun. And yeah, she, mm -hmm. she's great, but she, she was fantastic seeing, uh, seeing her do her thing a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was a good, she, she definitely uh, enjoys being in front of a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> it shows, she's definitely not nervous. She's not there, shy, sure. yeah. So, okay, at, at the mic, how long have you been doing this podcast? Oh, I just started that earlier this year. And at the mic is just uh, where I sit down and I talk to people about their lives, you know, and uh, just tell their life story. And see, I, I tell them, if nothing else, even if you don't want to do this for me, if you don't want to sit down and have a conversation with me, think of your kids and your grandkids who are going to be able to access this later and hear all about your life. Because I, you, I have, my grandfather has passed away, and I have very little of him on tape talking right. about his life. In hindsight, I wish I had sat down with him. So I made it a point that my, my grandmother, Nana, who's 95 years old, uh, was a recent guest of mine on my oh, show. Oh, that's and great. And so I, I killed two birds with one stone with that, you know? I got, I got a great show out of it, and I've got uh, an archive for, for future generations. Oh, that is, that is such a smart idea. And, and just a side note for those of you out there, if your grandparents are still around, it is a great opportunity to sit down, even if you just voice record it, a conversation mm -hmm. with them talking about their life, because it's tough, you know, at, at a certain point, you've done so much with your life. It's tough to be able to recall everything that you've done in your right. life, much less the life that someone else has lived. So I, I think that is becoming more and more common that people are interviewing and, grandparents. And if you can get to them, there's really no excuse because we all carry around phones that are just recording devices exactly. always exactly. right there with you. Yeah. Well, so um, you're, you're interviewing people kind of on their, their life story, mm -hmm. if you will. What is What have you found is the hardest information to get out of people? Like, is there anything where oh. everybody bottles up and they're like, no, I, I, I you know, I just don't feel comfortable well, talking first, about that? Like, I will say that, no joke, everybody is interesting. They'll never admit it but everybody is interesting in their own way. And there are people that I have worked with at The Blaze for these full 11 years that I had no idea certain things about them or, or that they were great storytellers until we took a moment to sit down and actually have a conversation. Uh, but I would say that the hardest thing to pull out of people you know, maybe people don't want to discuss their embarrassing stories uh, right. so much, you know? <laughs> so, no, that can be embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I'd say other than that, really. 
So uh, that that's one you find everybody's kind of yeah. like, ah, can we pump the brakes a little bit on yeah, this one? Yeah, I mean, that, it, it depends on the person. But, but truly, everybody is a pleasure to talk to and get to know. Well, so if everyone is interesting, who would you, who have you found the most interesting so far? that you've interviewed? Um, well, uh, I can't wait till you're on the show because then the answer will be you. <laughs> yeah, I, but you know, I, I can tell you that won't be the you case. You know what? I, I'll tell you, honestly. Um, there was a guy named David Brown who hosts a podcast called Business Wars. And I love Business it. Business Wars, Because okay. it, it takes like McDonald's versus Burger King, Nike versus Adidas. I've heard about this. Yeah, okay, I've heard and about he breaks this. them into six 30-minute stories. Okay. Uh, you know, Coke versus Pepsi. I mean, it's a story that's lasted oh, over a hundred years. I imagine. And, and it's fascinating because you learn history in a very entertaining way. So I thought, you know what? I really like this show. I'm just going to reach out to this guy. I found him. Uh, nicest guy, easiest to connect with. Yeah. Was very accommodating. And he and I had the greatest conversation. David Brown from Business Wars. And it, it was fascinating. And it so was they, can, they can find that episode out yeah, at uh, the mic. At the mic. Uh, David Brown guest. Yeah, you kind of have to look for at the mic with Keith because there's apparently a lot of at the mics out there. <laughs> but look for, the, look for the green thumbnail with my face on it. Well, so who is your dream guest for the show? Well, you know what? I am going to reach out to Bono from U2. Really? <laughs> that was my favorite band. That's cute, but why not? It's, al it's always been my favorite band for... I mean, you got like, David Brown. Bono's like David the next step, right? Right, right. It's, it's David Brown and just barely was Bono. <laughs> um, and let's see here. Uh, I Actually, I did reach out to uh, Deion Sanders. No I, kidding. I, I have not heard back, I'll be honest, as of this taping. So we'll see. Uh, now, now, do all of your guests come in studio or some remote? Interviews. Well, it's very interesting. Uh, and I, I know times are complicated right now for having you. Yeah, anything. yeah. I just bought a portable recorder that I have not put to use, so I'm looking forward to traveling with that at some point. Very cool. But uh, usually I try to get them to, to come into the studio. Um, and I find that, you know, face-to-face, -face, you know, you can generally read someone better that way as well. But Agreed. Yeah, that, that is why um, I, uh, I, I try... It, with all my power to not have to do any remote interviews. In fact, mm -hmm. up to this point, I haven't done any remote interviews on the show because of that very reason. Like, yeah. I feel like it's, you get people, they, they become more comfortable quicker, you know? If you are able to see each other smiling and make yeah. eye contact and have, have, just kind of get that rapport going on, especially if it's somebody you've never met before. Right. It's, it's easier to warm up warm somebody up if you're there in person as you and, yeah and see that's the magic of the david brown interview is that we actually weren't in the same spot and yet he's still he's such a great storyteller no kidding worked out nicely. Uh, yeah. well i'm definitely checking that out okay so how did you get into tv and radio boy i'll tell you um when i was eight years old there was a kid in the neighborhood who had a walkie talkie uh and he he was a geek, okay? He was just a geek, <laughs> period. You know? Hey, well, you're on pack geek right now. Yeah, so I'm on pack like... geek, right? And so I was a geek too, still am. And so together, he and I basically, um, you know, the, the old show um, Home Improvement? Yeah, <laughs> of course. So we, we, we took like a, a battery, like a lantern battery and then a car battery. And we, we, we continued to amp the power of this walkie-talkie and would test to see how far we could get it in the neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, that was like a miniature radio station, effectively. That's pretty and impressive. Yeah, so um, I was hooked uh, at that point. So ever since I was eight years old, um, you I were was... making pirate radio. Yeah, if, effectively. And all we did was just play the Beatles' uh, White Album uh, on a cassette tape. <laughs> and, and it was on a fancy player that you know, just kept continuous play. So And we just go around the neighborhood and see how far we could get it that day after school. But I will say what really uh, had me fall in love with not only broadcasting, but sports in general was the Atlanta Braves would, all their games were on channel mm. 17, WTBS, over the yeah. air in Atlanta. Yeah. See, everyone gets it on cable, but in Atlanta, you just needed rabbit ears. Right. And so my parents had this small black and white TV that they let me put in my room. So I would sit in my room and announce the game with the sound down. My mom would watch uh, the game in the living room with the sound down. And I was my mom's play-by-play -play no, watching wow. the terrible Atlanta Braves of the 80s. Yeah, so that's... But she would, like, she oh, killed the mom. sound, so she would just oh, let she you comment. is the greatest human being ever. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and so that really kindled a love, not only for sports, but for broadcasting as well. Yeah. Well, so you are, you're obviously a big sports fan. Yeah. Were you a sports card collector when you were younger, or are you still? 
I, I was uh, very active every day after school. Uh, you know, me and uh, many of my friends would, would meet at this uh, one particular uh, uh, sports card shop and um, we would just hang out and yeah. we would just talk sports with the owners and with all the other kids and, and you wouldn't leave there without buying at least one card every day. Of course. And so that was, you know, late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. And um, back when cards were... Back when uh, like they're 50 cents for a pack, you know, right. I remember those days. And I, I didn't realize at the time that the market was so saturated at that time, they were so popular. Yeah. And so now I've got tons of baseball cards from that era <laughs> that at the time were worth so much that we now are worth maybe a nickel each. A lot of us have a lot of cards from that era, but it was such a fun time to collect because it, it was, one of the few times that I can think of in memory that sports cards were completely mainstream. You know, it was like everybody, all the kids mm -hmm. at my school were collecting cards. Yep. And even like, I remember a lot of the fathers were buying cards, like put in the, put in the closet someday to retire off of that. Oh, and yeah. Like it, it was, it was everywhere. And it was like every six or eight months there would be a new company. Oh yeah. And they yeah. would just keep, because it, it, when you started out, it was what, maybe Topps, Fleer, Donruss. Yep. Was that it? That was yep. like my three. Tops, Donruss, like, and then yep. it was upper deck, and then it just gets out of control. Score upper Score, deck, upper and then deck. started yeah. expanding uh -huh. quickly. What, what would you say is your greatest uh, experience with sports collectibles? Greatest, um, I would say there was a, uh, in 1988, there was a baseball card show at the Cobb County Civic Center in Metro Atlanta, Georgia. And I think if I remember correctly, you pay like an extra 10 bucks or something, you get upstairs where there's three legends signing. This is yeah. before it became this huge business where you, it costs hundreds of dollars. To, you know, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I, I literally think it was 10 bucks to get upstairs to see Duke Snyder, Willie Mays, and Mickey Mantle. Oh my gosh. And when I got to the like, upper for real level, legends. For real legends. This is 1988. And I went up there. I wasn't prepared. I didn't, when we went to the show, we didn't even realize they were going to be there. I didn't have hardly anything. I think I had to run downstairs and buy just a plain baseball to get Mickey Mantle. Uh, Willie May signed the baseball. Okay. Mickey Mantle, I bought this like reprint card of his that he signed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't even, I don't think I have Duke Snyder. But we went up there and you would have thought these guys were nobodies. There was like six, seven people up Are there. Are you kidding there me? There were, I mean, you could hear crickets up there. <laughs> and so uh, it turned out to be incredible because it, it, you had them all to yourself. I mean, I had a conversation with Mickey Mantle about hitting uh, 70 home runs, right? It was 70 home runs uh, and, and Roger Maris hit 71 or something. Was that right? That was the year? Uh, yeah, anyway, 1960 or, 61, or 60 and 61, right? So 60 for Mantle, 61. Mantle hit 56 because he got injured and Maris hit 61 on the last game of the season. See, look at that. See? We, we have our own Google. <laughs> and so I had this conversation with Mickey Mantle that I obviously have already forgotten. No, so, uh, <laughs> but, but it was such a good time. It was so, both, so both was, those guys was were Mickey great. So was Mickey Mantle pretty cool? Both I mean, here's a, a young man coming in who mm -hmm. idolizes him and- Yeah. Um, I don't remember specifically what I said. I should have complimented him with the catch, but of course, you know, you're starstruck <laughs> at that point. I was not even expecting to yeah. see these guys yeah, that, that day. That's wild. What a memory. Yeah, yeah, that was. For uh, 10 bucks. Yeah, for, I, literally, it was. And somebody can fact check this. If it was more than 10 bucks, it wasn't more, 15 bucks at the most I bet to get up right. there. Yeah. They, they used to be quite a bit cheaper at shows to, to yeah. get access to the and, autographs. And it wasn't long after that, within a couple of years, that that became this industry. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And Man, what what a crazy story. So. Um, you you were you told me you're a Dale Murphy fan, <laughs> fan of the Braves. Love the Braves, yeah. And uh, are you an Atlanta Hawks fan? Yeah, Trey Young's really brought me back. Isn't uh, he amazing? Oh yeah, I'm the, a big Trey Young collector too. Yeah, so the late '80s, we would go to the Hawks games probably once every couple of weeks. No kidding. Yeah, you know Dominique, so you got to, Spud, yeah. Trey yeah. Rollins, Kenny Doc Smith. Rivers. Yeah. yeah. So, so we uh, used to get to the Hawks games a lot more, and then I just kind of fell out of uh, NBA for you know 20 years or so. Yeah. But uh, Trey Young's really brought me back. In fact, my 
I will I will condense this story for you, but my my youngest daughter really is who got me back into basketball. I didn't realize the NCAA tournament was on uh, a couple years ago in the other room, and she saw this incredible finish. Uh, I remember Duke won, Zion Williams won, you know, the last second shot or something like that. Yeah. Anyhow, so she and I, it just ironic that my alumna, uh, you know, the Nebraska Cornhuskers were playing in town that night. So we went down there on a whim and we haven't looked back. She is a huge basketball fan now. So we went up to Oklahoma City to watch the Hawks play recently. And we were gonna meet Trey. We're gonna see Trey Young. We're gonna. And he's from Oklahoma. He, right. So and that place. was the problem because <laughs> everybody was there to see oh, Trey yeah. Young return yeah, yeah. to Oklahoma. So we missed him by all accounts, 60 seconds. Oh, we missed no. getting something signed oh. by him. So, anyhow, so to answer your question, yes. Hawks fan, but I feel like I'm a new Hawks fan after being away for so long. Well, hey, they have, it's such a young team. Mm -hmm. They've got, you know, obviously they didn't have a great season this year, but they have a ton of potential. I think with some trades, they could they could become a playoff team. Yeah, I, I hate it that Vince Carter went out unceremoniously I with know, the whole uh, know, virus situation, but uh, we did get to see him there uh, in Oklahoma City, so that That's was That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, I'm guessing you're also a Falcons fan. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, and, Sadly, and, <laughs> but it's, I can't lie. <laughs> I didn't even see your hat, Keith. Oh, I no. Like, <laughs> I'm just guessing you're a Falcons fan. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so it, from the period of time you collected, uh, Deion Sanders oh, was yeah. a big deal. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm guessing he was probably talk of the town when when you're growing up? Yeah, I specifically, that, that baseball card shop I mentioned, I remember when the Sports Illustrated issue came in. Oh, yeah. The, they had signed up there behind the counter. Oh, my and that gosh. Was, that was a big deal. Yeah, prime time. Yeah. Well, so what, what all were his nicknames? He's, he's uh, Neon Dion, prime mm -hmm. time. Was there any others? I think the one runs the gamut. The, those um, were the, the two. Uh, Jerry Rice's uh, Nightmare, <laughs> no, I think, was uh, the other nickname there. Because no. we used to be in the same division with the 49ers. Oh, we yeah? had some epic yeah. battles together, those two. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I, I remember those days. Um, so, speaking of that, I, I brought some cards here that uh, I thought would be of interest to you. These are, I'm just going to show these. Uh -huh. These are 1989 Pro Set Series 2 football. Ooh. This is the set. Uh, that has the Neon Dion rookie, Ooh. one of the Neon Dion rookies Ooh. that I think you were probably searching Ooh. for as a kiddo. Oh yeah. So yeah. I don't um, think I even, I don't think I've even held a, a Dion Sanders card. Really? With it. Yeah. So oh, uh, man. Be, we we need to track them down. So one. let me give you yeah. a heads up on this set. So this, like I said, this is Series Two. Series One had some pretty good uh, stars in it. Star H O F. Hall of Fame rookie. Mm -hmm. We had Thurman Thomas, Michael Irvin, of course, local guy, uh, Tim Brown, and Chris Carter, all Hall of Fame rookie cards. But Series 2 is amazing. Let me tell you why. So we have Deion Sanders rookie in here. We have Troy Aikman rookie. We have Barry Sanders, who's like the biggest card in there. And then Derek Thomas, being a Chiefs fan, of course, I have to give Derek Thomas a shout out. So Series 1 had 440 cards. Series two, this whole box is series two, there's only 100 cards in there. So if you do the math, mm. if there's only 100 possible cards yeah, and you there's do the math. Four, I'm not good at that. four big rookies, <laughs> we've got a really good chance of even pulling multiple wow. of these of these rookies. So mm. I like our chances. Um, all right, here's 10 packs. Okay. Let, let's crack these open and see if we can okay. find a Neon Dion rookie for right. you. Good luck, sir. Well, thank you. I hope you do right. well. There you okay. Let's, uh, it's been Season a while five. since I'm, uh, I'm hoping for a Der a Derek Thomas rookie. I personally. am nervous just uh, opening these. You like, can I'm do gonna it. bend a corner or something. It's it, been so long. You know, I've been known to open packs like this with scissors just to make yeah. sure I don't. Scissors? Uh, bend Tony the corners, Eason, <laughs> the guy who replaced my cousin. What? Steve Grogan at quarterback for uh -oh. the New England Patriots. So okay. remember, if you find a good one, okay. you'll want you to uh, show it to this guy. Yeah, so, okay. Hey, I, I, this uh, is not a good one. That's why I'm holding it upside down. I'm going to I'm gonna let you oh, okay. open that pack that I just started oh, oh, searching oh. through. Oh, no. That must mean something good. Uh, Andre Bruce. <laughs> My memories are coming back. Richard Dent. There you go. Ah, how about hey, that aren't, aren't these fun names to think about again? Yes, yes. Uh, Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett. That's huge. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> James Brown. Tell me that's not the greatest <laughs> card in this entire set. Okay, what do okay, we got? Okay, so th this was my first pack. <laughs> Was there a pack from that era that didn't have a Reggie Roby card? I no, swear. No, no, he every... haunted me. Yeah, he haunted me. <laughs> okay. Da, da, da. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. What? In it, the first pack I opened, it is Florida Neon State Dion uniform. rookie card. <laughs> How oh great my gosh. Is that? Let, let me sleeve this up for you because right. you're taking this bad boy home. No. Uh, oh, of course. Stop. No, no, no. There's no way. Wow. I, I had to give this to you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Oh my this is goodness. This a gift from, from uh, should the, we... the friends at Pack Geek to you. Wow, should we stop opening at that point? I think I... we gotta keep on going. Okay, you know? OJ Simpson and Dan Fouts. Okay, there we go. That was a, By the way, OJ Simpson's cards, not worth what they were back when we were uh, hmm. young and looking for OJ cards. Then I wonder why he broke yeah, into that yeah. hotel room to take <laughs> his stuff back. Well, it's probably his only stream of income uh -huh. at that point in time, because they were, they basically have, any money he makes is having to go, Oh. I'm guessing to, to a family. A family. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Are you, okay. what in the world? <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Neon Dion, <laughs> the revenge. This is what I'm saying, series two, <laughs> Pro Set 1989 Pro Set Series 2 is the best you deal sleeve that one? in in football cards from that era. It is amazing. It's such a small set, <laughs> and there's so many good cards in there that you are going to do really well. Wow. This this hey, we talked about grading earlier. This is a nice looking card. Uh, if you recall, there was a, another rookie. I don't know if he's in this set. Did you say? Oh, you did say Barry Sanders is going to be in here. Huh? The other Sanders. Yeah, the other yeah. Sanders. Yeah. But what? Like, what an amazing rookie class that year, right? Oh, it's Gerald Riggs, baby. <laughs> the uh, Falcons legend, Gerald Riggs. Now, Gerald Riggs played for. Was he in the Redskins for a long time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The team formerly known as the Redskins. Oh, right, right, right. Let's see. So uh -oh. he was. Oh in man. The Washington Football Dude, Club. Dude, this is a. Sorry. Oh, Troy, Troy Aikman, Aikman rookie. rookie. Wow, that's what going one in 15 will get you. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> da, da, da. Listen, is, to, listen to the Falcons fan yeah, talking like, smack for Cowboys fans. He's like a stone's throw from, yeah. how, from many, Jerry how many Super Bowls do y'all have? Yeah. How many, three, four? Three, uh, Troy. Uh -huh. We have uh, three quarters of a Super Bowl championship. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Oh my gosh! So, Michael, Michael Irvin, Irvin. I am losing. So he's okay. So I may have been wrong on the. I was thinking, series two boxes only had <laughs> series two, but this is a series one card, so yeah. uh, it is not. And now, now what you're yeah. looking at is what a trade with the Minnesota Vikings will do for you. Herschel Walker trade oh, is whoa. what built your dynasty. Man, is that guy not built like a brick house? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. John Settle. <laughs> Come on, Falcons fans. Has you... there been so much excitement behind Falcons cards outside right? of the Atlanta area right. ever? <laughs> I, I mean, you're, you're talking to a kid who was excited when the game was sold out and it was on TV every week. Do you know how many uh, of my I, Falcons memories are listening to the radio? Man, I think <laughs> a lot of us can relate to that, not being able to watch that. Home team and, play and, unless and it was fact, sold out. Speaking of the Cowboys, I was excited whenever the Falcons had the Cowboys on their schedule in Atlanta because then Fulton County Stadium or later the Georgia Dome would finally be sold out and it would be a home game that would be on local TV. Thank you, Cowboys fans, for uh, making that happen. So, did you ever have a, a jersey of one of your favorite teams? I didn't. Um, oh my gosh! Oh no! What is going on here, <laughs> man? The third Deion Sanders rookie. <laughs> this is the heaviest Deion Sanders box ever. This is wow. That's this is great. meant to be. Your good luck. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, no, to answer your question, I think the first. Uh, you know what? I had like a Steve Barkowski jersey. That's right. Okay. I did have that when I was young, but then I didn't have anything until I was an adult, and the Falcons went to the Super Bowl in 1998 season, and. When the season, well, I guess about a year or so later when they were horrible again, <laughs> there was a Chris Chandler jersey hanging on the clearance, clearance rack at a Sears in Atlanta. And I thought, ah, I'll give him five bucks for that. <laughs> so I think Steve Barkowski, and now I have Michael Vick, because Pat Gray, 
the host of the show that I produce, uh, yeah. he got that for me one time. So I have a really uh, Michael Vick so jersey. So I do have a Michael Vick jersey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Keith, this is out of control. <laughs> I, what? <laughs> pulled another Deion oh, Sanders did. rookie. Okay, here's your Herschel That's, Walker card. We aren't through half of the box, right. and I have four, four Deion Sanders rookies. What, what, what are what are these <laughs> worth anyway? They, they, I, I don't know. Not too bad. All I mean, right. if they grade high, these are you know thirty or forty dollar cards. Ah, oh, the man who took the Falcons to the promised land ish. <laughs> One season of glory, right? That's what happens when you don't have injuries in the NFL. Yeah. You can do great things. Can do the great 1998 things. Atlanta Falcons are a testament to that. Oh my gosh, this oh, is insane. This is mm -hmm. insane. Okay, let's see here. How are you feeling? I, I'm just pretty excited. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. Do you need Since four we're... Deion Sanders Pro Set rookies? Because we can make that happen. <laughs> I'm one for everyone in the family. That's right, man. My kids would love that. Well, that is the uh, this is the first done. ever Atlanta Falcon to enter the Hall of Fame. Is it really? Who, I didn't who, realize that. Who was brave enough to go in as a Falcon? Okay, I'm I'm pulling some serious heat over here. Another Aikman rookie. All right. Man. How cool is that? But where's man? our Barry Sanders rookie? I hate I hate to get greedy, right. but now I want one of everything. A little Randall Cunningham action. Um, Randall Cunningham, if you'll recall, lost to the Atlanta Falcons as the Vikings quarterback in the 1998 NFC Championship game. Man, this has been an amazing uh -huh. box. Oh, there we go. Ooh, I thought look I forgot at that. how to See, that's them. right out of the pack, and it is creased, right? So you're saying Should that's it. not mint condition? That's definitely. Can you see that awful crease right in the middle? Ooh. Ooh. Right out of the pack like that. That's interesting. That is. Hmm. See, and that that's kind of a, a misconception that people have is that cards coming right out of a pack are immediately mint because they just came out of a pack. Right. That's definitely not the case. No I doubt. mean, because this thing's been around for how many years? You know, yeah. uh, 30 years. That, but you know, the factory, the factory has issues. They, they cut cards off center or, you know, might just get chipped being put in a pack. Who knows, but. Uh, Bobby Butler. One of so many Falcons quarter, uh, cornerbacks who was torched by Jerry Rice. <laughs> Charles Demery, I think, is the guy who gave up five touchdowns to Jerry Rice. Everyone in one game. got torched by Jerry yeah. Rice. No, you can't oh, take but that he enjoyed personally. playing the Falcons twice every season. <laughs> Okay. Let's... So you guys played the Niners twice? Yeah, seen? it used to be in the NFC West. Oh, okay. Because, gotcha. you know, Atlanta is whoo, so far west. Am it, I right? That's weird. I, yeah. yeah, it used to be Rams, LA Rams, San Francisco 49ers. New Orleans Saints, Atlanta Falcons, NFC West, crazy. Billy Joe Tolliver, another Atlanta Falcons, great, <laughs> right there. Anyway, let's see. And uh, are you in your last pack? I am. Did oh, I geez. go too fast? No, no, no. Oh, you're doing great. That. You're doing yeah. great. Usually, people that don't open cards like go really slow, but you're oh. you got a nice. <laughs> Speaking of, there he is. There's right. Mr. Dancing with the Stars himself. <laughs> All right, Jerry Rice, legend. Oh man. <laughs> Back in black. I did miss the red helmets the instant that the black ones came out, though. I still miss they, them. They have awesome uniforms, by the way. I used to have the 21 jersey myself, mm -hmm. the black Falcons jersey with uh, Neon Dion's mm -hmm. number on it. Mm -hmm. So I got a Chris Carter, who is a Hall of Fame rookie as well. Yeah. Stud. And uh, I'm just going to show this because I like Howie Long. What do you got? Oh, yeah. Even though he's a Raider, and you know I'm a Chiefs fan, so that's faux pas, but no, that's okay. that's cool. That's really good. Man, That's good job. Good stuff. That was, that was half a box. That was fantastic. Of the, uh, well, gold mine we're, we're, we're sharing these. These oh, are going to be, these, are, gonna be, these are our cards. These are sweet, man. This is Thank awesome. you, this Keith. So Thank you so fun. much for coming it. on, man. That was a blast. This and, was fun. Thank you. Um, hey, we, we need to do this again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come on your podcast. Okay, cool. And, uh, and then wait. you come back on this. Okay. Okay, so you get two pack geeks for everyone at the mic. Oh, that okay. work? Yeah, sure. I, so I, yeah. tell the folks listening how they can find your podcast and just find you on social media. Uh, yeah, on any, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, just look for At The Mic with Keith. I won't even try to spell my last name, Malinak. But uh, At The Mic with Keith, every Friday a new episode drops um, yeah. with someone else's life story. And then there's Pat Gray Unleashed Monday through Friday. Uh, look for that show. Uh, again, wherever you get your podcast. Awesome. Hey, man, great work. Thank you. You pulled so many good cards. I really can't believe impressed. the first card, the top card of the first pack was this guy. This one, shoot this one. This, this one. guy, Tony Eason. Again. How lucky can we be? Tony Eason, the guy who replaced my 
family member, <laughs> Steve Grogan. I don't know, he's like a fourth cousin once removed or something, I don't know. Twice um, removed. This is gonna have to be another episode. You gotta tell us about Steve Grogan. Oh, I've, I can tell you about, yes, I met him once and I called him on the phone one time and he was like, who's this? It's fun. Wait, wait, so like- You want me to tell you this? Yeah, let's. <laughs> Hold the press. <laughs> I gotta hear about this. Okay, so when I was eight years old, the New England Patriots came to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium to play the Falcons and after, and so I cried the entire game. Me and about <laughs> three dozen family members watched the game from the nosebleeds. Okay. And I cried the entire game because I couldn't figure out, do I root for my family? <laughs> do I root for my team? So anyhow, <laughs> after the game, uh, we all mobbed uh, Steve Grogan as he came out of the tunnel into the parking lot. Yeah. And he took pictures with us. So there's a picture of uh, me, this little dopey eight-year-old kid with the hair sticking up and all that stuff. And so that was fun, right? Two That's years, awesome. Yeah, two years later, the Patriots needed Monday Night Football. Uh, a win against the Dolphins to make the playoffs. Okay. I think that's how it went down. Anyhow, they won in dramatic fashion. And so I, I abused the privilege. Somehow I finagled the home phone number of, of Steve Grogan. And I remember coming home from school. I had a friend with me because he was on the other line listening. So it was a Tuesday. Came home from school and I called his house and the wife answered. And she's like, who's this? I'm like, this is Steve Grogan's cousin. My name is Keith and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. So he gets on the line and I just, I congratulated him uh, on making the playoffs and uh, he was very gracious, very nice about that. But uh, I love that your buddy's on the other line. Like yeah. you can't even do the other line anymore. Yeah, right, right. What's the other, people were watching. What does he mean the <laughs> other line? So is anyhow. he like, tell him, tell him, tell yeah. him. <laughs> tell him, tell him uh, Craig says hello too. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, that was uh, that was those are my two those are my two encounters with That's Steve Grogan in my lifetime. That, you were related to Steve Grogan, yeah, practically so, brothers. Practically, it's only been a good thirty-four years since we've connected. I'll, <laughs> I'll be sure to reach out. <laughs> hey man, thank you for that story. Thank you for coming on sure and, and uh, pulling like five Deion Sanders rookies. This that has a been blast. a blast, man. Thank we will you do this again. Me. All right, look All forward right. to it. Take All care. right, see you guys later. I'm about to open some Topps Chrome Basketball. Take that. Oh, these are so, such handsome cards. I, love, I just love that design. And that is the refractor. Oh, that's huge. Man, am I glad I opened this box. Hey guys, thanks for checking out another episode of Pack Geek. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks. Pack Geek.